Hey guys, I'm here in my studio with Aurora. Hello. And uh, I wanted to, a few videos back, you may have remembered, I was jokingly uh, very excited about a Polaroid camera. Well, I wasn't joking that much. Uh, I, I finally got it and it's super great. And uh, what's kind of cool about it and what kind of got me interested in it was the fact that it has manual settings. Now, there's ways to hack hack uh, you know, some of these Instax cameras and, and stuff, and we'll talk a little bit about that, to make them fire with uh, regular studio flashes. But normally you're somewhat limited still because there you either don't know or it's vague what the aperture is or the shutter speeds and stuff like that. This thing has a manual mode, so I can completely control it where I want to be. And what's kind of nice about it and kind of fun is that because I've got uh, I'm shooting tethered with a digital camera using TTL, I can actually use my digital to set up for my Polaroid, which feels very awkward because you used to use. Polaroids to set up for film. So it's kind of an odd switch, but that's how we're gonna do it. Um, so I'll kind of run through what I'm doing today. We're gonna make like kind of a dramatic portrait. She has beautiful blue eyes, and she had brought this blue kind of robe. So I thought we'd do a nice portrait with that. Um, so basically, um, I'm here in the studio, as I said, I've got a Profoto V1X with a two foot octagon and a grid on it. Just a V flat in the back to make it go black because we want to do a lot of contrast. Um, and then I'm gonna use also a one by three strip to get some separation, but we'll walk through each light one at a time. So I've got my, my Canon camera, uh, TTL controller on top. Now, the important thing here is, I looked at the box of film and it told me that it was 640 ISO. I also know that the camera is capable of going as wide as I think F12 and it closed down as F64. Um, I chose F16. F16, 125 is what I chose, ISO 640, and what I want to make sure of before I do anything is that none of the light in the space or very little of it is going to affect my shot. So I'll take a shot with no flash. So this will be a good one, right? That should give us a black frame, right? More or less. Um, it's not perfect in here. It's always so bright, but it's, it's good enough for this. Um, so now we know that we're there, right? Now I'm going to turn my flash on using TTL. Uh, I'm just going to start with my, my A flash, the, the octagon, just because that's how I like to work. And I'm going to bring this in. I'm going to frame, I'm going to keep myself around 35 millimeters because that's roughly where the lens is on the Polaroid. Cool. So we can see very dramatic light. Like we wanted to make, actually when she first came and, and we took the first kind of test shot in this, we were like, it almost has like a old like movie feel. So we wanted to kind of, we made it even more uh, contrasting and stuff by doing that. So we've got... Um, Lots of light coming from the side. We've got lots of shadow. This isn't typically how I light uh, women. It's not a glamoury type shot. It's a little bit more moody, which I kind of like. I think it's fun to do that kind of portrait sometimes. Um, what I definitely want to watch is we want to make sure that we catch enough light in her eyes because she's got the beautiful blue eyes. That's one of the main things I want to get here. However, this is kind of a little flat. You know, I like my backlight, so I'm going to turn my, my second light on, which is in the B group. And this guy is going to give us some separation for her beautiful blonde hair. Good. There we go. That gives us some three dimensionality. We can see still, you know, we've got that beautiful light in the eyes. Just like that. Um, I was gonna use some negative fill, but I don't think we need it right now. So I think we're good. Um, this looks nice, right? So what I normally will do is I'll work out a few poses. So let's try a few different things. Because remember the, the Polaroid is, this new Polaroid Originals film is, uh, a little slow to process, something like 20 minutes to get a full shot. So you kind of want to nail what you want to do uh, first. So we'll just shoot a few. There we go, try that. Good, good, good. I think you're leaning too far back, but let's just try it. Actually, it's not terrible. It really does have laser. <laughs> <It's laughs> not not terrible, not, not terrible. That's, that's how we like to. It definitely has a. Um, it's like a genuine smile there. Yeah, yeah. It definitely uh, has like a, a very. She's like, my hair is messed up. I don't know what happened today. <laughs> oh, all right. Don't tell anybody. Okay, so, oh, actually, that's, oh, that's cool with the hands. Do that. I just want to, can either, fix, can you just fix your hair? It's a little, yeah. I was going to fix it, but as you probably know, I'm terrible at fixing hair, so. <laughs> yeah, but I actually kind of like that. Then project your chin out a bit. Can you push, push your shoulders back, too, just to make it more difficult? Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. Just curious what the hands will do. It's oh, nice. interesting. Yeah, it's it's kind of it's kind of it's kind of like weird, but I love it. We like weird though. 
Yeah, I love it. And look at the color and the eyes. So that's actually really good. Let's try that. So now we want to try a Polaroid. So what we're going to do is we're, she's going to remember how she was, you know, as, as best as possible. And I'm going to now, and this is, this is the part that can be a little bit slow going, but you got to just do what you got to do. I'm going to change the flash into a, uh, the slave flash mode. So, unfortunately with these pro photos, you can't have the slave flash and the radio on at the same time. Um, I think some units you can, so you may not have that issue. So here I, I can't. So I've got my Polaroid and it has a flash on it, of course. Uh, what I've done is I built this little contraption, actually Dave built it, uh, that's out of a box, that's going to essentially block my flash from hitting her, because I don't want direct flash on her because I'll lose all that shadow on the front of it, right? It'll completely fill in and, and lose the shadow. So what we want to do is block that, right? So now we've got that kind of deal. So what I'm going to do, though, is, uh, second thing is I'm going to do my manual mode. And the way that works is you use the app. So I got my phone. Um, I do wish, and maybe they'll be able to do this in the future, that because as far as I can tell, once in order to use manual mode, you have to use the phone. So you can't like set it in manual, it won't stay there. And I guess they do that for a reason, probably because people would forget, leave it in manual mode, and then script their film. But for me, it doesn't make me happy. So I'm setting it to F16. I'm turning the flash on. Um, I'm also setting the, the eject to off. So you can actually set it up so when you take the picture, it doesn't eject. And the reason why I do that is because when I was first messing with this, a couple times it didn't catch the slave flash and didn't fire. And I wasted a piece of film. This way, if the flash doesn't go off, I'll just take another picture. Which is why we've set our camera where none of the ambient light is affecting our shot. So obviously these take 20 minutes to develop. I'm not going to be able to show you in the video right now as it pops out what it looks like. Um, I'll add them to the video though for you guys. Yeah, let's do the hand thing. I like it with the projected and the whole thing. So I'm going to get, this can focus up to one meter. So being from America, I have no idea what that means. So I'm just going to stand here. Here we go. All right. I saw the flash fire. And now like magic, I can go. OK. Awesome. And it's going to take a minute. So what you can do is uh, the, the rhythm of shooting this would be then put this to the side, throw your flash back on, work out to your next pose. When you see something good, you stop. This is actually very similar to how I used to shoot large format when I was uh, doing portraits that way, I'd shoot with my smaller cameras, and then when I saw something I really liked, I'd pull the large format camera over and shoot that pose. So, similar thing. Um, I would keep doing that, but, but we're not gonna do a full shoot here. But I do wanna show you one other quick thing. Like I mentioned, you can do it with other cameras. Well, um, Diana, I'm gonna run off screen. I'm running off screen, entertain them while I'm gone. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so, the Diana camera, which I think the new one it shoots with the square in stacks, the Diana camera um, has the capability of taking a hot shoe um, and the Instax back. And this, of course, has the advantage of just using the remote. Profoto has not made a TTL for Diana yet. I don't know why not, but uh, you can use the manual remote. I'm going to put this back onto the, uh, the air remote mode. Perfecto. Uh, and I'm going to do the same thing, right? I'm going to basically take my camera and we'll figure out um, a pose that we like. This, this is going to be black and white too. So maybe we'll do what we're doing earlier with the shoulders back. I kind of like that. You mean like this one? Or? Uh, no, no, facing the light, but like shoulders back kind of more side lit. Yeah, let's try that. Let's just see what that looks like. Okay. Hmm. Huh, interesting. I don't hate that. Let me, let me just see. I might want the number one negative fill for this one. Okay. Maybe more arms sleeping. Yeah, I think I we're getting too much of a blob here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we either need to see more of this or, or could, yeah, exactly. So what's happening here is the, the dress is really covering, especially in black and white, you're not going to see that. So by showing where the, br the, the line breaks, it should be better for us. Yeah, see how that changes. Um, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring your face up like this. Good. It's very dramatic. Oh, come on. Let me go, I'm going to get more of you in the shot. Interesting. It almost feels like you're being blown away by the 
<laughs> by the light. I'm blown away. And oh, move a little bit more with your face this way. Though. I want to keep that shadow. Yeah. I kind of like that actually. Let's yeah, do, let's let's do that. Messy. Yeah, I like I like the feel of it. There's something kind of loose about it and playful. That's not trying to be overly uh, perfect, which I like because I am not overly perfect. So what's nice about this method is I don't have to change anything. I can just grab the camera now. I know I have tape on the back, so I remember my settings. Uh, the second setting is F16. So uh, the only problem with this is that this film, though, is 800 speed. So what I want to do is go to 800 here, because remember I'm in TTL. There we go. Now the flashes have adjusted to 800 speed. And let's see, I'm gonna put set this guy up uh, between one to two meters, that's good. Frame it up, good, nice. It doesn't look like it fires twice, but it doesn't affect the, the film like that. Uh, and then with this guy, you just press the button in the back and it comes out. These develop much faster. Um, and again, I'll throw it, uh, what's that? Which button did you press? Ah, uh, this one. Yeah, it's got a little button in the back. So that way you can you know, shoot a few and, uh, and do that. So we're going to shoot more. I'll add some uh, of the pictures to the end of the video so you guys can see the finished kind of Polaroids. Um, thanks, Aurora. I will put her information in the description so you can follow her on the various social medias. Uh, be sure to subscribe if you don't already, and I'll see you next time.